Hi guys, and welcome to this video on gradient and direct proportion. My name is Darren, maths guru. Really good to see you. What are we going to be doing today? We're going to looking at the link between gradient and direct proportion. Yes, direct proportion basically means gradients are equal all the way along the line, or that the line is flat. It's a straight line. Kaching. There we go. Stop the video. No, don't stop the video. I've got examples. I've got humour. Stick with me. Now, if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It just lets me know you're watching. I'm not going to spam you. I don't really 500 videos a day. I just like to know that people are actually watching these. It actually makes me feel like it's worth sitting here. And tell your mates, tell your teachers that this is all here and all for you. So as you can see, our learning objectives above are going to talk about understanding what proportional means. I've just told you to know the form of an equation that links two variables, y equals mx plus c, and to know what the rate of change means. It's the gradient, but with units. There we go. Even more spoilers. OK, so to recap our previous video, really important, we now know that gradient is basically rise over run. So if I take two points between here and here, and then look at my rise and my run, I can find my gradient is one on one or one. Yeah, and it shouldn't matter which points I choose on this line, two and two, my gradient becomes two on two, which is one. ka -ching. We notice for that straight line that the gradient is the same all the way along it. Believe it or not, that would also suggest that the line is proportional. A little bit. Generally speaking, proportionality means that the graph goes through the point zero, zero. But this one here, you notice, doesn't. So how do we link gradient and proportionality? Well, that's the point of this video. A rate of change is defined, a oh, very mathsy term, thanks, buddy, uh, as a change in y values divided by a change in x values. Hold on a moment. Isn't that just what gradient is? <laughs> you think? Look, if we were to write it out as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, what do we see? We see that that is actually the formula for gradient. So, spoiler, the gradient and the rate of change are exactly the same, number-wise. Gradient, though, is just the number. So, for example, if I have gradient equals 1, that's it. It's just a number. If I want to know what my rate is, it has the same value as my gradient, but I've got to make sure that I put my units on. Now, in this situation here, this might be distance in kilometers, and this might be time in hours. So my rate would be one kilometer per hour. And you're going to say, how did I know that I did the kilometers first and then the hour? Well, it was from our formula. Remember, our rate of change is change in y values divided by change in x values. So that gives you the hint. It is the y per x. Y per x. OK, happy with that? Cool. All right, so average speed is effectively a directly proportional thing. If I was to get out of my house and I was to jump in my car, that would be silly. I would actually just slide into my car because jumping into my car might hurt a little bit. <laughs> and I drive to uh, Alice Springs. Yeah, there is no way my speed is going to be 60 kilometers an hour all the way through. All right, number one, I live on the 10th floor of a car park building. Yeah, I'm not going to drift around the car park. Yes, I said drift around the car park at 60 kilometers per hour because I'm probably going to kill someone, myself, yes, and wreck my car. So we know we've got to stop and start. We're going to go faster in some sections and slower in some sections. And so what we can do is we can say, well, if I look at how long it took me to get there and how many kilometers I traveled, then I can plot that point on a graph and then work out my average speed. All right. So in this situation here, how do we know what this one is? Well, it's told me in the question, for example, I've worked out that I've traveled five hours to cover 420 kilometers. So this is my distance in kilometers. This is my time in hours. Now, it's really, really important to realize that that doesn't have to always be x. That doesn't always have to be y. I mean, it is the x-axis and the y-axis, but we label them. So distance in kilometers, time in hours. And I've plotted that point. That's what that 5, 420 means. Now, because it's directly proportional, I know that this point here, 0, 0, also exists. Because when I left, I hadn't covered any distance. So at zero time, I'd covered zero distance, which means I can now actually join those two points together. And because that's a straight line, it is directly proportional. Whoa! 
oh, this stuff is awesome, right? Now, what it's suggesting there is the speed I travel at is constant. That's not true. Again, I'm not hooning around a car park. I'm not jumping every red light. I'm not sort of scattering pedestrians everywhere. Don't do that, bad idea, all right? But I can now work out my gradient, which will help me work out my rate. So my gradient is there 420 divided by five. I can't do that in my head. So let's fire up my CAS calculator. And what you notice is I've already done the calculation here. 420 divided by five is 84. So I know now my gradient is 84. That's my gradient, it's just a number. My rate would be equal to 84 units, which is kilometers, per hour. See that? So literally, it makes sense that actually I've traveled about 84 kilometers per hour because it means for every one hour, I'm gonna cover roughly 84 kilometers. See what we're doing here? That's messing with my head, but it's language, very, very important. All right, here's another example. Generally speaking in a the question, they'll always give you one data point, right? For proportional question, they'll give you a data point. And it says here, water is poured into an empty tank at a constant rate. It takes three hours. Mm -hmm. So there we go, we've got time in hours to fill the tank with 600 liters. So there we go. There is my volume, which is really a capacity because it's measured in liters, but anyway, in liters. And I've put my data point on there. I've put 3,600. Why is this important to me? Well, I also know that at time zero, there would have been nothing in this. And assuming that it fills constantly, and there's that constant rate business, it means it must be a straight line between. So having got that data point, what can we do? Well, we can work out my gradient. And again, my gradient is gonna be rise over run, and my gradient there is going to be, what is that, 600 divided by three, which is 200. That's my gradient. Now, as it turns out, pretty much every question is gonna want you to find an equation or a rule from this direct proportional or from points you've got. So I'm gonna join those two together. There we go, there's my two joined together. ka there and ka there. Now, what do we say here? This is my volume and we had time. And we knew that my gradient here worked out to be 200. Now, in a previous video, I'm fairly sure I would have mentioned y equals m x plus c. What is that? That is the equation of any straight line. Now the y stands for whatever is on my y-axis. Well, that's what I say here. My y variable is the wording I've written on my y-axis. And that is going to be for this question vol, because that's what I've written. So the volume is equal to the gradient. We work that out. That's just a number 200 times the x variable, what have you written on the x-axis? Not the letter x, have you written a word? Absolutely, so there it is time. And then we do this plus or minus constant. Now that plus or minus constant is actually the y-axis intercept. And generally speaking for direct proportion questions, that is going to be zero. So I've now worked out my formula. And what it says is for each hour in time, I multiply it by 200, and that will tell me the volume that is in my tank. Whew, this is awesome. Now, how are we gonna use this? Well, exactly as the question says. So the question is provided by Cambridge. Thank you so much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. I'm just gonna put in here vol in liters. Always useful to put these on here. And time in hours, and I wrote down that my gradient was 200. Right, what is the rate? at which the water is being poured into the tank. Well, my rate has the same value as my gradient, 200, but I've got to put my units on. And it's the y-axis units first, liters per x-axis hours. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, 200 liters per hour, part A, tick, done. Now you'll notice that part B then says draw a graph. Why? Why have I got to do that second? It makes so much more sense to do it first. So I did it first. Even if it was a little pencil sketch on my diagram in my margin or whatever else, do it. it. Makes life so much easier. Find the gradient of the graph. Already done it. Thank you very much. The rule for V. We've done that. If you remember, my V is equal to 200 times T. Right? My volume is 200 times T from my previous slide. Now we're going to use that equation. Most questions will then ask you to use it. 
So if we go to somewhere I've got a little bit more space, V equals 200 times T. Can we do that? Well, first question says find the volume. So we want to find the volume, so this is part one of D. After 1.5 hours, they've given you a time. So if your algebra is good, we're just going to substitute that in. So where I see the letter T, I'm going to replace that with 1.5. Fire up my CAS calculator. I've already done the calculation here. 200 times 1.5 is 300. You're going to turn around and say you could have done that in your head. I could have done. But there are lots of people here doing this who may not be able to do it in your head so or their head. So this is for you guys as well. Use your CAS if you have to, if you allow to, or your calculator. Now I'm going to put units. What are my units of volume? Volume was litres. So there we go. I'm going to type litres there. Not litres per hour. It's just litres because we're looking for a volume. In part two, they turn it on our head. What do they say? They say find the time to fill 5,000 litres. They've given me a volume. So I'm going to write down my equation. I always write down my equation first, then I substitute. So V is 5,000 equals 200 times T. And again, if your um, algebra is good, I'm going to divide both sides by 200 to give me 5,000 divided by 200 equals T. And again, on my calculator, I've already worked that out to be 25. And don't forget your units because we're dealing with time, 25 hours. And there we go. Now, hopefully that's given you a good introduction to how to do this. Dot, put the point they've given you on a graph, draw a line, work out the gradient. The rest of it should be easier the more you do. My name's Darren. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you can. Like, leave comments below. It means the world to me if you leave a comment, particularly if they're positive. Actually, generally, if they're positive. Hopefully, I'll see you in another video in this series. You take care. Bye-bye.